I've been thinking a lot lately about work-life balance. And what I really want to dive into during this camping trip is why it is so important not to let your day job define who you are. big item on the agenda for the night is camping but for today's trip I do want to talk about work-life balance for many of us our day job takes up a significant chunk of our time and energy it's easy to get caught up in the hustle of a professional lifestyle even to the point where you start to believe that your career defines who you are as a person but here's the thing it doesn't have to be that way in my life, I've found that maintaining a strong connection with the world outside of your work is not only essential for your well-being, but also for your sense of self. I'm just about to arrive at the spot where I plan to camp tonight, and it seems like the rain may have let up. It's still pretty cloudy out here, but the sun is out. I'm sure I'll get a little bit of rain tonight. The sound of rain on the roof of my tent usually is something that helps me sleep better than just listening to the wind blow. Well guys, I'm a little disappointed because I've got to the place where I want to camp tonight and it looks like that this unit has in the last month or so become a pavement unit. And so I am out in the national forest where normally I do a lot of dispersed camping, but because this is a payment unit, I can't camp here or I would have to pay to camp here. So I scouted this site out about a month ago. And when I came out here, I was like, oh man, this is a perfect site. I know I'm not the only person that likes to use this site, but this sign wasn't here. And so this new sign means that if I want to camp here, I've got to pay. And this site has quite a few amenities. So whoever set this area up did set up a fire ring as well as some firewood. And so although I would love to stay here tonight and I had hoped to just kind of back in and set up my Jeep, set up my tent for camping, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go find another spot. And in all honesty, if dispersed camping was too easy, it really wouldn't be any fun. So now I've got to head back down the road, find myself another forest service road, and hopefully I can find a turnout that doesn't have a payment unit sign. Maybe I'll do a little bit of research on these payment units to see how much does it cost to camp here. And if so, is there any minimum stays or anything like that? But ideally the way I'm set up, I'm not really going to want to be paying for uh, dispersed camping. Well, that wasn't really in my plan for today, but there are two forest roads within a couple of miles of where I'm at, and so Hopefully they haven't all become pay use sites. Well guys, I might be in luck. I passed a site a few seconds ago that looked like a perfect turnout.
So this right here, this beautiful place, is where I love to come to reconnect when I'm outside of my office. Being out in this kind of nature has a really remarkable way of reminding me that there's more to life than just work. So don't get me wrong, I love the work that I've chosen. I've been doing it for over 20 years and it's a very rewarding career. However, I meet folks all the time that when they take off their, their work clothes, they go home and they live in that mindset that they're still at work 24 seven. And while if you're doing something for so long in your life, you can honestly lose your sense of identity. And so my purpose out here and what I've discovered over the last three or four years making YouTube videos is that I love to do things outside of work that have nothing to do with the work that I do. So I think the main takeaway is to really keep in mind what truly matters, whether it's relationships, values, or something that defines you that is not your work life. It is getting a little late, and so I'm gonna get my dinner ready. Tonight, I've got a steak and veggies. You guys know, it's one of my favorite meals. So one thing I didn't really think about is it has been raining quite a bit today and I'm gonna use the Blue Eddy AC240 to cook my dinner tonight. And this power station rests in the bed of my Jeep, essentially exposed to wind and rain. So as I get my food cooking, I just need to be careful to make sure that I don't shock myself with the power station. And to make that happen, I'm gonna use the app to set up my my cooktop so that I don't have to have physical contact with the power station while I'm getting it going. It's almost comical the types of things that I forget when I come out on these trips. Today, I for some reason decided not to bring any paper towels or anything to wipe any of my utensils off. So I'm just gonna have to cook with what I have and when I get home tomorrow, then I will be able to clean all of my supplies. Otherwise, I would like to wipe down at least my skillet before and after I use it. And today, that's just not gonna happen. But let's turn on the AC output. To start off my meal, I'm gonna go ahead and get the skillet cooking. This thing will warm up very quickly and I've got a ton of veggies just like I like them as well as some butter in my veggies. This just smells amazing, but I'm gonna let the peppers and the onions cook for about 10 minutes so I can caramelize them, and then I'm gonna throw my steak on. The hot plate's been cooking for about 10 minutes and my Blue Eddy AC240 has used about 10% of its internal battery. Now the AC240 has about a 1500 watt hour internal battery 
And then I do have the, the expansion battery on the side over there that has about another 2000 watt hours in it. I think the total for the two power stations is about 3,700 watt hours. And so this little skillet, I could essentially run it for at least three hours on max power if I wanted to. However, my goal is to only use about 20 minutes of power. That way I don't burn through all of the battery power so that I can keep my fridge cool for the rest of the weekend. So I'm just about to call the steak done and these veggies and I realized I installed my table up here last week so that I could have a place to cook without having to clog the bed of my truck. But it seems like I just resorted back to using the truck bed anyway. And so maybe the table's not necessary, but I was having to juggle a little bit with getting into the deck drawer while cooking. Whereas if I had used the table, I wouldn't have that problem. <laughs> So another mistake I've made with how I built my Jeep out is my camping chair is soaked from all of the rain, but huh, I don't know if I want to sit on it. I may just sit on the bed of the truck here and enjoy my steak. So while I sit here and enjoy my steak, I've got a little challenge for you that I would like you to try this week. Take some time to step away from the office, disconnect from your work, and try to enjoy yourself. And hey, if you're so busy that you barely have time to do that, get out and go for a hike. Go for a hike on your lunch break. Hmm. Just getting out, soaking in a little bit of sunshine can work wonders on how you feel. And in case I haven't mentioned yet, this steak Cooked in butter is amazing. Mm. I cooked for about 20 minutes, more or less. In total, I only used about 11% from the AC240. Now, the percentage here is potentially a little deceptive because I do have the side battery. And as the side battery sits here, it does top off the AC240. So... What you see here is the percentage after I finished cooking and some power came back in from the B210. So I feel like I've had a lot of luck with the AC240. It's only designed to sit in the rain for about 10 minutes, but I've had this thing in the bed of my Jeep since I got it back in February. And so it's been exposed to some pretty wild weather conditions. It's supposed to be water resistant and dust proof, but I feel like it's honestly just waterproof. And if you're interested in checking it out, check out the link in the video description. It's a power station that I've had a lot of luck with over the last three months. Well, that's enough talking about the power station. I've got to get this tent set up so I can have a comfortable place to sleep tonight. And I ended up not even using this chair, so... I'll probably have to rethink how I carry the chair. My original thought was I would slide it in that little gap right there under the deck drawer system, but the chair is just a little bit too long so that it connects with the wheel well too far back and I can't close the tailgate with the chair in that spot.
this thing's not too hard to set up, but definitely a little longer than I'm used to with my minivan. And if you're familiar with my channel, you'd know that I started pretty much with minivan camping. And now as I've transitioned into the overland camping, I'm able to go much further off the beaten path to places like this. However, I do feel like the minivan camper would have found this place or reached this place without any troubles. This Blue Eddy AC240 system has so much power that I'm just gonna leave the light strip hooked up all night. That way when I get up in the middle of the night, I'll have a little bit of visibility if I need to move around the Jeep. But on the other hand, leaving that light on all night could invite unwanted guests. Luckily, there's no bears in the area, but there's coyotes, there's other animals, and lights are sure to invite any insects or animals to come congregate near the tent. Well, I've got something to say to you. I can tell that spring is in full swing because I've seen quite a bit of caterpillars out here, quite a bit of other small insects. So I need to go ahead and get up in the tent, get it closed off. That way I don't let any bugs in it. And another thing is that it's in the mid 70s right now. And so I got just a little sweaty setting up that tent. And before I get in it, I'm gonna go ahead and go into my Crocs mode or my four wheel drive mode. That way, as I get up in the tent, it's easier for me to get in and out without bringing my shoes and dragging all my mud in. It, it has rained quite a bit today. And so that's something that it doesn't really concern me having you know mud or whatever, but I wanna keep my environment as clean as possible. So I'm laying down and these lights are honestly a little too bright for me to sleep with. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut them off for the night because they've attracted all kinds of insects. I don't want bugs all over my tent while I'm sleeping. I did not bring a battery pack up into the tent with me, but this tent has a USB light strip that runs across the top. And if I brought a battery, I would be able to see a little better. Right now, I'm using the light from my cell phone. It's just those little LED lights. But I don't really need much light because it's about 10 o'clock. I'm gonna lay down and get some great sleep. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Well, it didn't rain at all last night. It was very windy and 
I was a little worried maybe one of these trees would fall over on me in the middle of the night as bad as the wind was. But no problems at all. No bugs, no animals, no uh, two-legged uh, predators visiting. I'm going to drink some coffee and hit the road. So I've set that tent up probably about five or six times now. And one thing I can tell you for sure is after doing it a few times, I've definitely got the hang of it. It's much easier than when I first bought it. If you watched my video where I bought this tent and installed it, uh, you'll see that I definitely struggled. But now, I don't know, maybe it took two or three minutes just to get the thing set back up. All right, guys, the rain's coming in, so I'm going to forego the coffee this morning. But please consider subscribing. And now that I really think about it, I'm glad the, the rain held off until after I got the tent put away because my tent is dry and it's raining otherwise i'd have to put it away wet and then open it back up when i get home so lucky night it was honestly a great night camping out here in the forest 